Uh, Senator Paul. Dr. Fauci, the government recommends uh, everybody take a booster over age five. Are you aware of any studies that show reduction in hospitalization or death for children who take a booster? Right now, there's not enough data that has been accumulated, Senator Paul, to indicate that that's the case. The, I believe that the recommendation that was made was based on the assumption that if you look at the morbidity and mortality of children within each of the age groups, you know, zero so, to five, five to 11. Right. So, so, let's, so there, there are no studies, and Americans should all know this, there are no studies on children showing a reduction in hospitalization or death with taking a booster. The only studies that were permitted, the only studies that were presented were antibody studies. So they say, if we give you a booster, you make antibodies. Now, a lot of scientists would question whether or not that's proof of efficacy of a vaccine. If I give you 10, or if I give a patient 10 mRNA vaccines and they make protein each time or they make antibody each time, is that proof that we should give 10 boosters, Dr. Fauci? Uh, no, that, I think that is somewhat of an absurd exaggeration. Senator well, that Paul. is the proof that you use. Your committees use that. That's the only proof you have to tell children to take a booster is that they make antibodies. So it's right. not an there absurdity. Are, You're already no. at like five boosters for people. You've had, you know, two or three boosters. It's like, where is the proof? Now, I think there is yeah. probably some indication for older folks that have some risk factors. For younger folks, there's not. But here's the yeah. other thing. There are some risk factors for, for the vaccine. So the risk of myocarditis with a second dose for adolescent boys, 12 to 24, is about 80 in a million. This is both from the CDC and from the Israeli study. It's also in the VAR study, remarkably similar, for boys, much higher from boys than girls and much higher than the background. The background's about two per million. So there is risk and there are risks. And you're telling everybody in America just blindly go out there because we made antibodies. So it is not an absurd corollary to say if you have 10. In fact, you probably make antibodies if you get 100 boosters. All right? That's not science. That's conjecture. And we should not be making public policy on it. So, Senator Paul, if I might respond to that, uh, we just heard in his opening statement, uh, Ranking Member Burr talk about his staff who went to Israel. And if you look at the data from Israel, the boosts, both the third shot boost and the fourth shot boost, was associated with a clear cut clinical effect, mostly in elderly people, but also as they gathered more data, even in people in the 40s and the 50s. So there is clinical data. But, but not in children. Well, uh, well, see, again, here's you, the thing is, you're not willing to be honest with the American people. So for example, 75% of kids have had the disease. Why is the CDC not including this in the data? You can ask right. the question. You can do laboratory tests to find out who's had it and who hasn't had the disease. What is the incidence of hospitalization and death for children who have been infected with COVID subsequently going to the hospital or dying? What, what, are the, what is the possibility if your kid has had COVID, which is 75% of the country's had COVID, what is the chance that my child's going to the hospital or dying? If you look at the number of deaths in pediatrics, Senator, you can see that there are more deaths of in people who have had it, uh, of people who have had the disease. Uh, Senator, we also know from other studies that the optimal degree of protection when you get infection is to get vaccinated after infection. And in fact, showing reinfection in the era of Omicron and the sublineages that vaccination but you can't policy. answer the question I asked. The question I ask is how many kids are dying and how many kids are going to the hospital who've already had COVID? The answer may be zero, but you're not even giving us the data because you have so much wanted to protect everybody from all the data because we're not smart enough to look at the data. When you release data earlier, when the CDC released the data, they left out the category of 18 to 49 on whether or not there was a health benefit for, for adults 18 to 49. Why was it left out? When critics finally complained, it was finally included because there was no health benefit from taking a booster between the 18 to 49 and the CDC study. Another question for you. The NIH continues to refuse to voluntarily divulge the names of scientists who receive royalties and from which companies. 
Over the period of time from 2010 to 2016, 27,000 royalty payments were paid to 1,800 NIH employees. We know that not because you told us, but because we forced you to tell us through the Freedom of Information Act. Over $193 million was given to these 18 employee, 1,800 employees. Can you tell me that you have not received a royalty from any entity that you ever oversaw the distribution of money in research grants? Um, well, first of all, let's talk about royalties. That's the question. No, that's the question. Have oh, you ever no, overseen, Senator, have you ever received a royalty plan. payment from a company that you later oversaw money going to that company? You know, I don't know as a fact, but I doubt it. I well, would be well, here's the thing is, why don't you let us know? Why don't you reveal you how much you've gotten and from what entities? The NIH okay, refuses. Senator, Senator, Look, we ask them. We ask them. The NIH, we ask them whether or not who got it and how much. They refuse right. to tell us. They sent it redacted. Here's what I want to know. It's not just about you. Everybody on the vaccine committee, have any of them ever received money from the people who make vaccines? Right. Can you tell me uh, that? Can you tell me if anybody on the vaccine approval committees ever uh, received gonna, any money from people who make the vaccine? Question? Soundbite number one, are you going to let me answer a question? Okay, so let me give you some information. First of all, according to the regulations, people who receive royalties are not required to divulge them even on their financial statement, according to the Buy Dole Act. So let me give you some example from 2000. 15 to 2020, I the only royalties I have was my lab and I made a monoclonal antibody for use in vitro reagent that had nothing to do with patients. And during that period of time, my royalties ranged from $21 a year to $7,700 a year. And the average per year was $191.46. It's, it's all redacted, and you can't get any information on the 1,800 Senator, scientists. Your, your time I'll is long. So we to want to know Senator. whether Senator or not Paul. people got money from the people who made the manufacturing Senator Paul, vaccine. your time is long over expired. I gave you an additional two and a half minutes. The witness has responded. We are going to move on. Senator Sanders.